Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers. Homebuilt scale B-29 flies again. EAA calls out FAA for new aircraft testing limitations. Official date confirmed for Lakeland's Affordable Flying Expo. And I'm your host, Holland Blake. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Homebuilt scale B-29 flies again. Okay, not exactly an affordable flyer, but certainly notable in sport aviation circles. There's a 35% scale home-built B-29 plying the skies these days. The extraordinary result of builder Tom Hodgson's long-running development of the third scale replica, powered by four Honda Fit engines with a number of specially designed accessories to deliver enough power to get this 50-foot wingspan monster off in just 300 feet on grass. With a power-to-weight ratio of 7.5 pounds per horsepower, the large 3,000-pound airframe made its first flight late last year, but an errant golf cart got in the way of its first landing and damage was done, leaving Tom to go back, repair the damage, and prep for its second flight completed just a few days ago. The aircraft leaps off the deck and is hardly underpowered by any stretch of the imagination. The aircraft uses all manner of airplane tech, metal, composite, automotive conversions, and some ingenious redrives and engine brakes to stop the fixed pitch props in the vent of an engine failure so as to reduce drag. The Bird is a two-seat tandem design that was ostensibly built as a test for the engine program Hodgson was developing around the Honda Fit times four. More info as it becomes available, but we sure hope it comes to Oshkosh next year. After the break, MW Fly Americas will cover North America for Italian Power Plant. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. MW Fly Americas will cover North America for Italian power plant. Competition is a good thing for the aero consumer, most of all. Here comes some more good news in that vein, as MW Fly Americas now takes over the North American distributorship for US, Canada, and Mexico for the widely varied Italian MW Fly engine series, which offers a great number of normally aspirated and turbocharged engines that has expanded dramatically in recent months. In terms of competition, take the MW Fly Spirit 160 versus the Rotax 916IS. With similar weights and power output, the much simpler, normally aspirated Spirit 160 is a great deal less expensive and building a solid rep overseas. More info to come. IAC Hall of Fame selects their latest inductee. The International Aerobatic Hall of Fame announced their latest inductee on August 21st. The winner, Linda Myers Morrissey, started her medal-winning streak in the 80s and has been continuously involved in the sport ever since. The IAC Hall of Fame was created in 1986 with the purpose of properly recognizing those who have significantly contributed to aerobatics. Its committee receives hundreds of nominations every year, closing the submission pool on February 1st. Subsonics heads to the EAA Museum. 
Subsonics aircraft announced that the JSX-1, the original Subsonics proof-of-concept personal jet prototype, is now a resident of the EAA Aviation Museum in Oshkosh. The historic aircraft joins the original prototype Sonics and other aircraft designed by John Monnet. The display will be reorganized and includes a Sonar I-1 prototype, the original Moni motor glider prototype, and the Monix racer. Aero TV, Seekeray's latest model, moves into the U.S. Check out a new Aero TV feature about the exciting Seekeray Sport Helicopter lineup. The Seekeray 8 is an advanced ultralight helicopter kit. It was showcased at the Seekeray booth at EAA AirVenture. The company's adventure machines are some of the most powerful on the market. The latest design, the Seekeray 8, is a two-seater side-by-side ultralight helicopter with the 140-horsepower Rotax 915 IS engine. Flight test coming soon. You can see the full video on our YouTube channel. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. EAA calls out FAA for new aircraft testing limitations. The EAA expressed concerns about a new FAA policy that would limit Phase 1 testing operations. The Order 8130.2K is expected to take effect on October 27th. 8130.2K cuts down on the number of airports permitted for Phase 1 flight testing. The previous wording stated, quote, this aircraft may only operate from identify names of airports, end quote, to be filled in by the appropriate inspector or DAR. This enforced no specific cap on the number of airports that could be listed. The new wording allows only one airfield to be listed, though, quote, a second airfield may be listed with valid justification of a specific flight test or safety requirement, end quote. Phase 1 testing of an experimental aircraft requires ensuring it's able to operate in different environments. With only one field permitted for use, inspectors would not be able to verify an aircraft's performance with various runway surfaces, wind conditions, or traffic volumes. This order is not only needlessly restrictive, but also poses a potential safety hazard, especially in initial testing, where the safety of a flight could be compromised at any given moment. Pilots should not have to worry about getting the aircraft back to one specific location. For obvious reasons, the EAA is not happy with the new order. After these messages, official date confirmed for Lakeland's Affordable Flying Expo. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com The legendary BD-4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The Surewings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD-4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD-4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Surewings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Official date confirmed for Lakeland's Affordable Flying Expo. After consult with our friends at Lakeland, a final decision was reached for the debut of the first Affordable Flying Expo. The Affordable Flying Expo is finally and officially on the books for November 6th through 8th of 2025. The Affordable Flying Expo will boast plenty of opportunities to inspect some aircraft, getting shoppers up close and intimate with new aircraft as they navigate the lengthy purchase process. 
It will also offer an exceptionally strong opportunity for Mosaic issues to be explained, discussed, and utilized if we actually get the rule by next Oshkosh. It's hard enough as it is to canvas a whole category of aircraft and settle on one particular plane after judging all its competitors, but it's near impossible to be content with a purchase without a whole lot of test flying beforehand. The Expo will fix that by giving pilots a nice, low-pressure, enthusiast-focused event with room to breathe. The Expo is for the people and pilots above all. The Affordable Flying Expo is still growing quickly, gathering exhibitors, manufacturers, educators, and experts to make it the go-to for all things sport plane next November 2025. Some exceptional benefits and programs are being compiled to give exhibitors excellent bang for their buck, as well as creating an atmosphere that promotes their ability to reach out to the aviation or want-to-be's community. For more information, visit affordableflyer.com. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.